Hey guys, Gabe Soros here from Soros Tactics. I have a Kalashnikov in my hands. <laughs> Some of our Patreon readers were asking me to do a video on the AK because it's still a very viable uh, weapon platform in America today, all over the world actually. Uh, and so, you know, here we go. I'm going to make it uh, as short as I can, but there's a good amount of stuff to talk about. Okay, so Suarez International taught the very first Kalashnikov centric class, Kalashnikov focus class in America in 2005 in Prescott, Arizona. That is a historical fact. Okay, look it up. Um, and from there, we expanded uh, and taught uh, a, a four day program that we called Red October. Uh, and we taught a bunch of different things related to AK. Um, you know, we brought uh, uh, Fuller in and, you know, he brought his PKMs out and, you know, we had a Spetsnaz guy come out and, and everything else. And it, it was a lot of fun and there was a lot of interest in this particular web and platform at the time. Uh, and, uh, you know, so now I want to say around 2012, uh, I kind of started stepping away from this because a number of things happened. Okay. Um, one, um, there was a law that, that actually started taking effect where uh, you could not import uh, 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 rifle kits, in other words, demilled rifle kits, which is what all of these were made of. These had pristine barrels, almost unused armory uh, quality uh, parts, and so um, uh, makers would source an American receiver, a few 922R parts, they'd throw the thing together, and for about 400 bucks you had a very, very high quality Kalashnikov rifle. That went away. Uh, and then we started seeing the, uh, the cheap Charlie AKs and, uh, you know, and then on the other side, we started seeing uh, AKs that were really no longer AKs, but they were so changed and, and with the, the intent of uh, turning them into ARs that it was like, it was, this is not an AR and it's not an AK. You know, it's, it's like a man trying to compete in women's sports. It just, it, it's like, what, what, what's the point here? Okay. So, you know, in frustration, I just kind of go, you know what, I'm kind of moving away from this because this is already on a race to the bottom. Uh, and, and we started building our own um, AR rifles. Uh, and we did very well with those for, for, for a very, very long time. Okay. Now, um, flashing forward to today. Okay. Um, I, I'm still doing a good amount of training, a good amount of consulting. And the thing is this, this has a very notable profile, okay? Um, there are no police agencies, to my knowledge, that are issuing these in mass to their officers. No military unit in the U.S. that is issuing this to their operators, okay? So there is a danger, and this has been verified by, uh, you know, law enforcement folks. Um, if you see someone that... Uh, appears to be a law enforcement officer. In other words, they're fit, they have the grooming standards, they're moving tactically and everything else. They have an AR. There may be that moment of indecision. Is he one of ours? Is he, you know, uh, uh, you know, here along with us and so on. Now, those little moments of indecision are important because they give you the opportunity to set this down and, and identify yourself and all of that. And don't wave that off because blue on blue incidents uh, are very, very common. And it is a danger that I am very, very concerned with. Okay? And that's with an AR. Now, you grab up one of these and you're running around an environment with an AK rifle. Um, the impression you make is a different one. Okay? So that in itself might cause me to deselect this. Now, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate from the AK crowd and stuff like that. I don't care. It's my opinion, and uh, I I have the uh, the knowledge base to back it up. Okay, uh, if you disagree, what I want you to do is I want you to find me some law enforcement people that are highly placed. You know, not some you know backcountry dude that carries an AK and he doesn't have anybody around him for a thousand miles, but some some urban environment law enforcement guy, and I want him to do a video. He can do an incognito if he wants and say, if I see somebody running around with this, I'm not going to think that he's a bad guy. Okay, I don't think you're going to find somebody that's going to do that. Um, that's just that's my opinion. So that in itself, the potential for blue on blue misidentification uh, might cause me to not select this and to pick an AR uh, instead as my primary rifle. Okay, 
Um, again, you know, in my opinion. Okay, the second thing is, um, <clears throat> don't try and turn this into an AR if you are selected as a primary weapon. You want an AR? Go get an AR, okay? The old song and dance that, well, ARs aren't reliable. That's bullshit, okay? ARs are just as reliable as these. On the other side of the coin, these can be just as accurate as ARs. If they're built properly, uh, if you're using proper ammunition, and if you've managed to put an optic on this, which is not an easy task, okay? Um, so don't, uh, don't select this because it's better than an AR because it's not, okay? All right, now, operating characteristics. This is the safety, okay? Um, until you are engaged, I advocate, like I always have, don't say I said any different, that you keep the safety on, okay? When you are engaged, the primary hand sweeps up, and it could be middle finger or index finger, and they sweep down the safety, and now you're back on, on target. Okay, uh, back in the fight, so to speak. The fight is over, you have no one else to engage. Boom, this goes right back up and you're good to go. Okay, uh, that you can't disengage the safety as fast as on an M4 does not invalidate this as, as, a, as a weapon. Don't use games to select your weapon platforms for combat. Okay, simple as that. Um, okay, so the, the second part, uh, operation. Okay, this is the charging handle right here. There's three ways to do it. Okay, one can be your primary hand, two can be your support hand, and that can be over the top or underneath. Okay, depending on where you are, how the weapon is positioned, what shooting position you're in, and so on. You don't always have to keep your firing hand on fire control. Sometimes the tactics and expediency demand that this hand be the one that comes up. Okay. Uh, I'll leave that to you for interpretation. All right, changing the magazine. Um, you know, uh, let's see. Uh, here we go. Mm. So a lot of times online, you'll see, you know, the, the the bullet golfers. They do the reload like this, and they come up and they hit this, and you know, uh, they go. Let's see, like that, and then they go like this, and everybody goes, "Wow, it's like a spinning flying back kick from Jackie Chan." Okay. Look, that reload is stupid, okay? No one's going to do that in the real world. First of all, you're given X number of magazines to fight with, okay? If you're in a CQB environment, you run out of ammunition, transitioning to pistol is going to be faster than trying to reload the rifle. Moreover, you don't know why the rifle stopped. If you try and reload a malfunction, you're still going to have a malfunction, okay? So I don't advocate this stupid little trick, okay? What I do is... Um, I teach I teach you to magazine comes out dump it in your dump pouch get a new magazine lock it and rock it and now you're good to go okay after locking and rocking work the action to ensure that you have a round in the chamber okay that is the caveman way to run the AK um, don't don't try and, and and get fancy and stuff like that use robust techniques that are going to work every single time okay now, we've taken this particular reload, which incidentally is the same one that we use for handguns. We put it on the clock against these other Jackie Chan type reloads. This does not lose any time to them because it's more robust, it's easier, you can do it under duress, you can do it while you're running, you can do it while you're prone, you can do it in any position whatsoever, okay? So, um, you know, keep, keep your mind in the game, which the game is combat, the game is not sports shooting, okay? All right, so anyway, that's, that's it for the AK. Um, there's, uh, there's not a lot to it. Most of the way that you keep this reliable and you keep it uh, uh, you know, accurate and everything else is you do a couple of things. One, you make sure that it's put together properly, okay? Any monkey can put together a, uh, a cheap AK in their garage with duct tape and screwdrivers and stuff like that. That's not what I'm talking about, and I'm not talking about that for AKs or for ARs. Uh, you're a professional. Seek a, a professionally put together weapon um, that's going to be reliable. It's going to work. Okay, it's got to have a good barrel. Um, you know, it's uh, it's got to have good ammunition. Now, this is where calibers like 300 Blackout and 556 um, leave the AK behind. In that, there are a myriad of loads in 556 and 300 Blackout that. Um, are as accurate as any human being can be, okay? 
Now, having said that, there are loads like that for the AK as well, but you're going to have to look for them. It's not going to be the cheap, uh, uh, you know, uh, stuff that you find online for, for you know, shooting at, uh, you know, at a class or, or whatever, okay? It's going to be quality ammunition, uh, probably U.S. made or, um, you know, uh, European made other than, than steel case. For example, uh, Lapua in, in, um, uh, in Finland, they make a fantastic 762 by 39 very difficult to find here in the U.S. Um, this particular rifle, um, I took shots uh, from prone at 300 yards on a steel head target uh, in front of students back when we were teaching a AK classes. And what, I was, what was I using? I was using a special load from Corbon that Corbon had put together for us using Lapua components. Um, but you know, it was expensive and so it didn't become a financial reality because people wouldn't have bought, the AK market wouldn't have bought it. Um, but you know, it was like maybe a, a buck fifty a round or something like that. They weren't for bump firing into the, into the berm. They were for that sort of precision shooting, and, and for that it worked very well. Um, the other thing is it's, it's exceedingly difficult to put an optic on this rifle. I've seen top covers online that have rails and stuff like that. Listen, the top cover on an AK is not analogous to the upper receiver on an AR. It's not going to be the same. If you want to put an optic on this, uh, you're going to have to go with a front rail like this. Okay, I used to have an Aimpoint T1 on here at one point or you're going to use one of the traditional com block systems here. The problem with that is that now it precludes you from folding the weapon for storage and, and carry, okay? So um, this is a weapon that for modern applications is a study and compromise. Um, if you choose it, just be aware of all those issues that, uh, that I brought up. I don't have uh, an agenda here other than, than, than you know, telling you the truth about what I think. I don't sell rifles anymore. I don't customize rifles. I don't do any of that stuff. So uh, now, what do I carry with me you know, as my go-to rifle when I carry a go-to rifle? It's an AR pistol with a Maxim brace uh, and, and 300 blackout, okay? Um, this is in the safe. It stays in the safe. I brought it out to do this video, and when I'm done, it's going to go right back in the safe, okay? Um, if you guys are interested in me doing a one-day uh, AK event like I'm doing for Double Action Pistols uh, in uh, this summer, let me know. Uh, I'd, I'd be happy to do it. Um, I think we have a perspective on running the AK that, uh, unfortunately, most instructors have forgotten. So uh, anyway, that's it. Let me know what you're interested in doing. It's a good weapon, but it's got limitations. Okay? Peace out.